Now, yesterday, former President Donald Trump was on the telly saying he's committed to keeping the US in NATO as long as European countries treat American fairly. Uh, he said that during an interview with Nigel Farage on GB News. Joining me right now to discuss this is Chairman of Republicans Overseas UK, Greg Spencer. Good morning to you. Thanks for joining us in the studio. Good to be here, uh, And also Benedict Spencer still with, here as well, with us as well. Let's play a couple of quick clips. Actually, we'll just play the first clip about um, NATO. Uh, this is Donald Trump. Uh, he was asked uh, about, you know, this lots of concerns about if he does become president again, whether or not NATO would still be there to back up Europe, given since he was last in power, we have seen that invasion of Ukraine by Russia. Here is what Donald Trump had to say. The United States should pay its fair share, not everybody else's fair share. No, fair enough. I believe the United States was paying 90% of NATO, the cost of yep. NATO, could be 100%. Yep. It was the most unfair thing. And don't forget, it's more important to them than it is to us. We have an ocean in between some problems, okay? We have a nice, big, yeah. beautiful ocean. And it's more important for them. They were taking advantage, and they did. They took advantage of us okay. on trade, and they took advantage on So if the they military. play fair, if they start to play fair, America's there. Yes, 100%. Right, so if you all play fair, Greg Spencer, he's going to carry on making sure that uh, US funds NATO. Look, this is a genuine concern for a lot of European uh, members of NATO. Yeah, and I, I don't think it should be. It, it, if, if the European countries spend more money or a greater percentage of their GDP, if they hit the 2% target, then President Trump or any American president will be there. For, and and for an NATO. awful lot of countries weren't. I mean, Germany in sure, particular. It, we see some other countries like Poland up to, I think, 4% now. But right. it is, it, when he said this some years back when he was president, and, and the, the great and the good, and they were like, of course. Oh, clutch their pearls about how awful it was that he wasn't committed. No, he's making the point that, you know, why should America be committed to NATO, which is about saving Europe yeah. from, from Russia or anyone? Um, when, when Europe isn't committed. Right, and, and it would be better for, the, for, the, for Europe, for NATO ex-US, to be less dependent. You know, they, yeah. they shouldn't be treated like children. And well, it's just really... something Emmanuel Macron is very keen on. Yeah. The French president is very keen and, on having a sort of European army and, right. and, 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 want, and wants to do this so we're not so reliant. That's right. When Trump started bantering about this in 2017, 18, there were only five countries meeting the target. Now there is 11 and it's going to 18 by the end yeah. of 2000, by the end of this year. So, uh, yeah. you know, progress, so that's But, good, but good as news. per usual, you know, a lot of people accuse me of Trump derangement syndrome, but I don't know. I, I criticise him when I think he's done something wrong, or says something wrong, uh, or his character, I think that's fair to criticise. But, but when he said stuff like this, oh, I always said, no, he sure. was completely fair to make this point. Um, in, in terms of where we are in the election now, of course, yeah. you know, since we last spoke, you know, he is going to be, I mean, unless something massive changes, the Republican uh, nominee right. for president. Uh, we're going to have, of course, the, the conventions in the summer for formally making Joe Biden the Democrat nominee right. and, and Donald Trump the Republican. Um, do you think there is any possibility after all of, you know, the shenanigans we've seen, um, given, given all the criminal charges, where if any of these cases do, and they're getting delayed each time they're coming forward, they're getting delayed, there are four sets of, uh, yeah. of, of trials he's facing, that any of those will actually happen before the November election day and that he will be convicted in any of those? And if that happens, will that stop him winning the presidency? Yeah, possibly. So but all these different stages. There are a number of voters who have indicated in polling that they will, will not, and it, that number could be 5 to 10 percent, of Republicans that will not vote for him if there's a conviction. However, that's the sentiment now. The, yeah. more, this go, the, the more this drags on, the more shenanigans that you're seeing from the, the prosecutors, whether it's Alvin Bragg or Fannie Willis, mm -hmm. the, the better it is for Trump. So I'm not sure that that metric is going to stay. And, and yet he is very keen, his lawyers constantly just pushing these trials further away yeah. and further away and, and asking for another date and another date because he doesn't want a conviction uh, while, right. while he is and, uh, and, uh, still running for... Now, part of that is because the impact of the election, but also... Sure. If, if he does become president before any of these trials start, which is totally possible, mm -hmm. those trials won't go ahead then until after he is, is in office? In theory, yes. And of course he can't run for a third term under the right. US Constitution. Right, and, and, and look, these things, for the most part, they're backfiring, right? There, there's not a lot of credibility to, several, to at least three of the four. And the one that does have some credibility is the documents case, but you have to look at it in the context of how they're handling President Biden's case, which basically yeah. they're giving him a pass on it. 
because of his cognitive And that's the thing issues. where this all becomes politicised and everyone's yeah. already decided already. So, Let me also bring me another clip of what Donald Trump yeah. had to say to Nigel Farage yesterday. Uh, and this was in relation to Prince Harry, always in the news. And of course, there's been a lot of moves in, in American circles to try and get the details of Prince Harry's visa application. Yeah. Because, of course, to get a, a US visa to live in America, you, you can't have uh, done drugs and things like that. You have to sign a document saying that you, you have not used a classy drugs, broken the law, etc., etc. And then he writes a whole biography, <laughs> spare in which he admits doing huge amounts of illegal drugs. Let's have a watch and a listen of what Donald Trump had to say about Prince Harry. And we'll have to see uh, if they know something about the drugs, and if he lied, they'll have to take appropriate action. Appropriate action? Yeah. Which might mean not staying Oh, I don't know. You'll have to tell me. You just <laughs> have to tell me. You'll just have to tell me. It is interesting there. I mean, look, you know... W would he realistically, you know, throw Prince Harry out of America, do you I, think? I can't imagine that he would do that. He might even take the opportunity to give him a pass or give him a pardon. But I thought, I thought the president was pretty smart last night. He, he turned that into not just judging on Harry, but he talked about, you know, what the relationship was with, with the Queen, as well as it was the fact full that of praise he was the disappointed yeah. in Harry that, that he disappointed the Queen. So I, I thought he did a, a good job handling that. Look, I mean, look, he, he, doesn't, I mean, he doesn't really care what, what British people think of him, but really, does he? Because, yeah. you know, we, we don't get a vote. Although there are Americans living here who get a vote. I'm guessing they probably already decided themselves. Yeah. I thought it was a much less sort of bombastic Donald Trump that we've seen yeah. in, in recent interviews. I thought he was much more measured. He was... He, he wasn't unfiltered as he is when he does the rallies or when he does the one-off press conferences. So was that because Nigel Farage and they're, they're friends and there was they a are, bit yeah. Of... I mean, you could you could see that it was a you know they was, have a, was... they have a relationship. Yes. It was not a hard you know it wasn't a hard driving you know really pressure uh, type of interview. Well, we but... know what happens when that happens. Donald Trump walks out. <laughs> Get up and walk. Benedict yeah. Spence, what did you make of it? I'm just really happy that he's running again. I can't lie, everything's going horribly wrong in this country, but it puts everything into perspective. Um, it, was a, it was an interesting interview. I, I mean, it, it is that sort of thing where, as you say, he doesn't necessarily care about what British voters think, but he did, I think, it was very important <coughs> to him, the sort of the pageantry and the sort of the prestige <coughs> of being seen with members of the royal family. So I think it is curious yeah. that he's gonna sort of try and be a bit measured about this, maybe play it for a future state you know, visit or you know, quid pro quo, if we keep him here, can Well, can no, I he only wanted that? the state visit for the Queen, didn't I he? I don't know. No. Although you think he'll want it, I, mean, I don't, I don't he think really he'll have that much it. interest in King Charles. He'll want it, he'll want it for Kate and well, William. Well, I thought he was complimentary of King Charles as well. Yeah. And, and remember, Trump came for two visits. So one was the state visit, yeah. but the prior year in 2018, he came. Uh, oh, of course, and, yeah. And well, so we should wait and see. The UK. All to play for uh, Greg yeah. Swenson from Republican Services UK. Thank you so much.